the Monster Trio, aka the Straw's first and last line of defense, which is composed of Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji. They are some of the most well-known and beloved anime characters of our generation, as well as some of the current strongest characters in One Piece. But how would their strength translate to the One Punch Man universe? I had already put one of them against one of the best the One Punch Man world has to offer. But for the sake of the video and those who haven't watched the previous battle, I shall be going over how the monster trio strength would look like when put against the One Punch Man universe. To start us off, I will be going over the guy who I've already scaled multiple times on this channel, that being the captain of the Straw Hats and the current strongest of the monster trio, Monkey D. Luffy. Luffy in terms of strength is someone who can match Kaido, the king of the beast, performing the famous Yonko Sky Splitting feat, a feat well known by now to range anywhere from large country level to possible continental levels of power. With Luffy having performed this while in base form and having several gears to stack on top of that power. Not to mention Luffy later on gets even stronger after finally unlocking the full power of his fruit and turning into Joy Boy aka Gear 5 Luffy, gaining a power with which he's finally capable of beating Kaido. In Soro and Sanji's case, they both scale above Dress Rosa Luffy who was capable of beating Doflamingo with a punch that nearly destroyed Dress Rosa. Said punch has been calculated to ice and levels of energy and both of the wings of the Pirate King far surpass this level of power given the fact that they end up facing off Kaido's two strongest commanders, both of which are leagues above the prior mentor Doflamingo. And the two wings will go on to show their superiority to their adversaries. With Zoro in one instance being able of blocking a combined attack from Kaido and Big Mom in the previous battle on the rooftop. In this same rooftop battle, Zoro even managed to hold his own for a brief instance against hybrid form Kaido, managing to cut him twice. Which speaks volumes to his strength because it is afterwards that Zoro discovers he too can use Conqueror's coding, which further amps his already impressive power. So to summarize, we have Luffy while at a high end on those continental to multi-continental levels of power using the gears, with Zoro being slightly below him and Sanji being slightly below Zoro, still on those country to large country levels, based on all of them scaling above an Iceland level Luffy from Dress Rosa. Now how about speed? This is an area where all three of them exceed, with all of them being relative to each other back in the pre-timeskip era. An era where an injured Zoro dodged a point blank light base attack from a pacifista, an impressive feat that puts all three of their reactions in combat on those light and faster than light speeds, given all three fighters were doing around the same against the pacifista. After said time skip, we clearly see that all three guys have grown exponentially and that doesn't even come close to their power in Wano, where we see Sanji, who is the weaker of the three. Perception Bliss Queen, a character who in its own right should have faster than light reactions based on scanning far above a base Sabaori Luffy. We also have all three of them being capable of reacting and blocking attacks from Yonko such as Kaido and Admiral such as Fujitora and Kizaru. Kizaru specifically, who is believed to be the fastest in the navy, was overwhelmed and manhandled by Gear 5 Luffy, further solidifying the trio's insane combat speeds. Now all that said, how does the trio compare to the strongest the One Punch Man world has to offer? Can they match the performance of the S-Class heroes and battle it out with dragon level monsters? And if so, where would they fall if they became part of the S-Class? Well, just like our previous video of Kaiju number 8 being in, in the One Punch Man universe, when it comes to the case of fighting dragon level threats, these monsters tend to scale all over the place, with the lowest dragon levels reaching those CD to possible mountain levels of AP, and the absolute strongest reaching those large country levels of power. Meaning with this in mind, it is safe to say that the monster trio would have no problem whatsoever facing down even the strongest of adversaries in here. With their insane strength and speed, the monster trio would have the necessary power to put down most, if not all, dragon level monsters in a 1v1 situation strictly looking at physical stats. With Luffy potentially having the power to trade blows with people as strong as Monster King Orochi, who could muster multi-continental to possible moon levels of power. In other words, Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji have exactly what it takes to battle it out with the strongest in this verse and be considered S-Class level. But just how high in the S-Class would these guys reach? In all honesty, I have no doubt they'd be up there with the top of the S-Class. And if we exclude Blast and Tatsumaki, they would probably be the top of the S-Class. 
with Sanji being the only one whose strength can be put to the question as for his placement. And this is physicals only, I'm not even getting into their hacks and abilities as each of them have an insane mastery over hockey which would allow them to fight beings such as the likes of black sperm and evil natural water, people who can ignore physical damage to a certain degree. They would also be fast enough to be considered rivals to people such as Flashy and Sonic. Heck, if the Monster Trio would have been in the Monster Association Invasion arc, both Sanji and Zoro might have been able to fight people like Battle Sperm and Sage Centipede, with Luffy possibly being capable of fighting and awaken Garu, pushing Garu further than any of the other heroes aside from the likes of Blast and Saintama ever could. So yeah, as you all can see, the Monster Trio is exactly that, monsters. Cadre level for sure, and I have no doubt on my mind they'd be at the top of the S class, with Luffy being the third strongest after Blast and Tatsumaki. And yeah, before anyone comments, obviously they're not gonna do anything against Saitama, they all get one shot it, as Saitama only clearly loses to Goku and Superman, just making that clear. So yeah. Now thank you to all the brave warriors who stayed with me until the end, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like it, tons of fun content coming, now god bless you all and see you all on the next video on the fictional matrix.